So this ability to remember how to do motor acts, like changing lanes, is called procedural memory. And it's a type of implicit memory. Implicit means that your brain holds the knowledge of something that your conscious mind can't access, like riding a bike or tying your shoes or typing on a keyboard or steering your car into a parking space while you're talking on your cell phone. These are all examples of implicit memory. You can execute these actions easily enough without having any idea of exactly how you do it. You would be totally unable to describe the perfectly timed choreography with which your muscles contract and relax as you do these things or as you navigate around other people in a cafeteria while you're holding a tray. But you don't have any trouble doing any of these things. This is the gap between what your unconscious brain can do and what you can access consciously. To the extent that consciousness is useful, it's useful in small quantities and for very particular kinds of tasks. It's easy enough to understand why you wouldn't want to be consciously aware of the intricacies of your muscle movement, but this can be a little less intuitive when applied to your perceptions and thoughts and beliefs, which are also the final products of the activity of billions of nerve cells. For a good example of this, consider chicken sexers. So what is a chicken sexer? Well, when little chicken hatchlings are born, large commercial hatcheries divide them up into males and females. And this practice of figuring out which is which, of distinguishing the two genders, this is known as chicken sexing. Now, the hatcheries divide them up because the two genders get different feeding programs. The females who will eventually lay eggs are highly valued. But sadly, most of the males are disposed of because they don't produce eggs and only a few males are kept and fattened for meat. So anyway, the job of the chicken sexer is to pick up each hatchling and quickly determine its sex in order to choose the correct bin to put it in. The problem is that this task is famously difficult because female and male chicks look exactly alike. Well, almost exactly. So the Japanese invented a method of sexing chicks known as vent sexing, by which expert chicken sexers could rapidly figure out the sex of one-day-old hatchlings. So beginning in the 1930s, poultry breeders from around the world traveled to the Zen Nippon Chick Sexing School in Japan to learn the technique. The mystery was that no one could explain exactly how it was done. It was somehow based on very subtle visual cues, but the professional chick sexers could not report what those cues were. Instead, they would look at the chick's rear end, where the vent is, and simply seem to know the correct bin to put it in. And this is how the professionals taught the students. The master would stand over the apprentice and watch. The student would pick up a chick, examine its rear, and put it in one bin or the other, and the master would give feedback, yes or no. And after weeks on end of this activity, the student's brain was trained up to masterful levels that were totally unconscious. They could tell the sex of the chicken, but they had no idea how they were doing it. 